So what can we learn about life balance from our stove and how does minimalism play into it? I think that's a great question. Let's talk more about that coming up next. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. We love sharing tips and tricks to help you simplify your house quickly because, I mean, it's made just about every area of our life a little bit easier. But today I wanna to talk about this idea. It's called the four burner theory, and it gives us kind of a framework for how we can be more successful with life balance and work-life balance, and basically this idea of trying to do it all. So let's talk about this idea of the four burner theory. Oh, and this video is sponsored by Blinkist, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So let's talk about this idea. Here's what it says, is that we can think about our life like a four burner stove, and each of the four burners represent a different main area or category of our life. And so the four are family, friends, health, and work. But here's where this theory gets interesting. What the author proposes is that in order to be successful in life, we need to cut out one of the burners. Cut it out. <laughs> And if we really want to be successful, meaning that we want to make a meaningful contribution to the world, then we need to cut out too. Now, cutting them completely out sounds a little bit, I don't know, harsh <laughs> to me, a little impractical, but this idea of maybe turning down, putting it on simmer, if we want to be successful. And I really like what James Clear from Atomic Habits said about this theory. He said, when I first heard this, my first thought was to figure out how could I bypass it? So how could I combine burners? So he said, I thought, well, what if I get a standing desk and then I can combine the health and the work burner? But he goes on to say that, that it just doesn't actually work that way. And again, my first reaction too, when I thought of this and heard this, was that we can't turn down burners, right? Especially as women often were like, that's just not possible to completely cut out burners or even to put them very low. And that's why you and I for so long have been trying to balance it all, right? And we look at our stove and we have all the different pots and pans on it and we're trying to juggle them all. But what happens? This isn't what our stove looks like, right? No, it starts to look like this. I mean, really. And then what happens is that it becomes very difficult to distinguish what's important and what's not. Another quote from this book, Essentialism, is that almost everything, almost everything in our life is trivial or meaningless or worthless, and that there are very few essential or worthwhile things that we need to do on a daily basis. And like I said, when our stove gets out of control and we're, we're doing this, we're trying to do it all, we're trying to juggle it all, it is very difficult to sort out the trivial from those things that really are the most important. And so initially my thought was, okay, but there's gotta be a workaround, right? But then I actually, as I thought about it more, I started to feel very validated because I'm like, if this is true, then no wonder I couldn't do it all, right? No wonder I couldn't find the perfect time management tip or meal planning app or whatever that was gonna help make it so I could do it all. It's not physically possible, right? And so then I was like, okay, I actually feel validated. And now instead of thinking about how can I do it all, I wanna start thinking about okay, well, which burners need to get turned down and how do I do that successfully? Because if I'm being intentional about this now, which burners need to be turned up and which ones need to be turned down, then even though I am having to turn them down, let's face it, my health burner has been turned down anyways, right? So let's just admit it and let's move on. How can I still be successful? And so if I were to take a look at my life right now and the burners that are up and down, I would say the two burners that are up are work and family. The ones that are down are health and friends. And you feel like a little bit of a jerk saying that, right? Because now what does this make me? You know, materialistic, I'm focusing on work or, you know, I don't care about friends. Even though I've been telling you all recently that a form of self-care is making time for friends, <laughs> right? But again, let's just recognize it for what it is. Those burners have been turned down whether I acknowledged it or not. So let's instead say, okay, here's where I'm at right now. These two burners are up. 
how do I strategically turn down the others where I'm not completely neglecting them. So I want to talk about that. But like I said, this video is sponsored by Blinkist and I've been using Blinkist for about six months now, but I want to tell you the three different ways that I use it. So uh, the first way is to check out books or to get an idea of them before I buy the the full book. The second is to revisit really important points from books that I've read in the past. And then the third is for accountability. And so what's so cool about Blinkist is they have over 3000 nonfiction titles and they take the full book and they boil it down to blinks or the main points of the book. And so each book then is 15 minutes or less and you can listen to it or you can read it. And so in the past, I'm a super impulsive book buyer. And so if someone's talking about like a new book, I like just go to Amazon and I buy it or I go to Audible and download it. And then I end up with lots of books that I've started and never finished, right? <laughs> and so the book with the four tendencies has come up recently and it's a very cool concept. And so I'm like, I need to get that book. And I'm like, no listen to it on Blinkist first. And so then I can go to Blinkist again, listen to the main points. And then from there, I can decide if I want to go further and listen to the whole book. So I listened to it, got the main points. It's a very cool, like very cool subject, but I, I don't, want to take more of my time right now to learn more about it. I did the same thing with essentialism when that was recommended to me, listen to the blanks and I'm like, oh my goodness, I need to listen to this whole book. And so within Blinkist then, you can also download the full book at a discounted price. So that's really cool. The second way I use it is to revisit books that have been really life-changing, like Atomic Habits, The Five Second Rule. Uh, there's a parenting book I'll link to down below. And so I love when I'm getting ready in the morning just to listen to the blinks again and get the main ideas and get excited about those again. The third way is for accountability. So like many, I have been interested in intermittent fasting lately. And so I listened to a really good book on intermittent fasting. Well, I listen to the blinks. But what's cool about this is that I find it to be a good accountability. So in the morning when I'm trying to fast until like 10 a.m., the hardest thing for me is coffee. I can drink it black, but I am just like watching the clock until I can add my cream and honey to it, right? And so sometimes it's like, eight, eight o'clock, I don't know, nine o'clock. And I'm just like, I just, who, like, who cares? Let's just skip it today, right? And so I'll go back and I'll listen to the blinks in that book and I'll get re-excited about why I was interested in the, the first place. And so it helps me with accountability. I'm like, okay, remember, this is really good for your body. I can make it till 10 o'clock. And so I have a link down below the first 100 people to use it. Um, you can try it out for seven days completely free. And then beyond that, it'll help you save 25% off the full membership. So I will put that down below. You can check it out. Thank you to Blinkist. But let's talk a little bit about how we can keep our burners in balance with this in mind that we can have, we can only have two up. And so I like to think about it as seasons, that we all go through different seasons of life where different burners are just gonna take priority. And I'm sure if you look back on your life, you recognize that. So like I said, right now I have my work burner and my family burner up, but I am excited to get to a point where the health burner could get turned up again. And so as I look at my work burner, then I like to think ahead to, okay, I will give it you know, priority right now, but what's my long-term strategy and how will I get to a point where I don't have to have it this one turned up all the time or turned up so high? And one way they recommend as well is to outsource. So are there things that I can outsource? And like right now it might be like, oh, I couldn't possibly, <laughs> right? But if that's my strategy and if I know that's what it's gonna take for me to be able to turn that burner down in the long run, then that's the way that I need to be thinking. Or like I said before, just being okay, understanding, okay, I don't have time to cook right now. My work burner is taking a lot of priority or, my, or uh, my family burner is, maybe it's my friend's burner. I mean, a lot of us, our burners get turned up without us necessarily having any input in it. For many of you, your health burner got turned up. You didn't do that, right? It got turned up for you, or you're caring for another family member who has extra needs. And so your family burner got turned up, but you didn't have any control over that. And so again, instead of working against that or saying, okay, if I can, if I can just find the right time management tip, then I'll be able to manage this new thing and do it all. If instead we say, okay, it's a burner that's up. 
Like I, it, it's up and I can't do anything about it. So what am I gonna do about my friend's burner? And what am I gonna do about my work burner if that needs to get turned down right now? And so again, what could feel like a big limitation, right? Like, oh, we can't do it all. I think instead if we would, I don't know, embrace it. I don't always love that word, <laughs> we'll put the air quotes, right? If we could embrace this, um, if we can just recognize it for what it is and say, okay, like, I can't do all four, but I'm gonna do two really well. And we say, that's how I'm gonna look at it. I do think that there can be a lot of freedom in that. And of course, yes, 1000%, I think minimalism comes into this. Again, I don't know which exact burner, housekeeping and clothing and all of that falls into, but I do know that maybe for this season, we need to create a uniform. Maybe for this season, I have to find healthy meals that I can order and it is gonna cost me more money, but, my health needs to be a priority right now, but I don't have time for it. And so what things can I do? Can I highly streamline my kitchen? Can I make it so my bathroom in the morning only has the stuff that I need to get ready? What stuff could I purge from my house to make things flow more smoothly in it so that I am not giving, like, I mean, doesn't this cause us to realize how precious our time and energy is? And I am not willing to waste any of that on something as trivial as, having a full closet of clothes and nothing to wear, right? I'm just not gonna do that. I'm gonna buy clothes that fit right now. I don't even care if it's the cutest thing ever or whatever, I'm just gonna know that in the morning when I open my closet doors, I pull it out, I put it on, and I go. And I'm not gonna do it all because my stove looks like a hot mess and it just <laughs> does not work anyways, right? Doesn't work anyways. <laughs> so I hope this is helpful, but I'm, I really wanna hear from you. Does this resonate? Does this seem to make sense? I know when I told it to my mom and sister, my mom was like, oh yeah, that was my 30s, just trying to do it all, right? And, and Diana said the same thing of like, wow, that feels, very validating and I don't want to try and do it all anymore. And so I would love to know, does this feel like that to you? Does it feel validating? Do you feel like you can choose right now which burners are turned up and which are turned down? Or do you feel like that decision has been made for you? We don't always love that, right? That doesn't, it wouldn't be our preference, but is there a way for us just to embrace that right now? <laughs> Again, there's that word, embrace that. <laughs> can we just love this right now? <laughs> Can we be okay with it right now for what it is, recognizing that most likely it's for a season and trusting that down the road, we're gonna have a little more control over which burners are turned up and which are turned down. So I am excited to hear what you have to say about it. And it, I had one gal too that was like, nah, I don't think that's how it is. And I'm like, that's fine, right? I just, I just throw this stuff out there and then you decide for you, right? But if you do need some help simplifying your house, I hope you subscribe so that we can help you declutter and just get through your house quickly. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already, but I love you. I hope you have a really great day and I look forward to visiting with you again soon.